In this video, I'm gonna show you how to sell a $1 bill for $10. I'm not gonna just show you how to do it. I'm gonna teach you the economics behind it and how to apply that lesson to making our world a better place. Hi, I'm Craig and welcome to Market Power where we look at the power of markets and economics to shape our world. And once you understand that power, you're gonna understand choices and consequences and you'll be able to make meaningful change in your community and in your personal life. And you might say selling a dollar for $10 doesn't sound like a meaningful change, not in society at least, but the how-to behind this is part of the ingenious part about economics. It's something I really love to do with my students. This is something I do with my students every semester, and this year I decided to film that part of the lecture so that way you could see this in action. I have a dollar bill that I would like to sell to you. Let's see if I can dramatically unfold this, okay? One dollar bill, it's just a regular one dollar bill. There's nothing, literally nothing special about this except I took it out of my kid's allowance this morning, okay? So I hope you can feel good about that. The first step in how to sell your dollar is to set up an auction, but not just any auction. It has to have this specific rule, and that is the top two bidders have to pay their bids. That means if the highest bid is 10 cents and the second highest bid is five cents, then the person who bid 10 cents gets the dollar, but they both pay, so I get 15 cents. The second step is to just let people volunteer to participate in this auction and see where it goes. I will start the bidding off at five cents. Okay, five cents. Do I have 10 cents? I, oh yes, I do take Venmo. I do take Venmo, sorry. Of course, of course. I'm gonna show you the final outcome of these auctions, but there are three points where I'm going to pause and explain some interesting observations so that way you can see the economics of how this auction is evolving. So who would like to bid five cents on my dollar bill? Okay, we've got, we'll, we'll go here, 10 cents here. I'm gonna keep pointing at the two highest bids so that way I know who's who. 15 cents, okay, uh, 20 cents. We'll go up here, you've had 25 cents, 30 cents, 35 cents, 40 cents, 45 cents. Let's see, you were 40 cents, right? 45 cents, uh, 50 cents, 55 cents. This is the first point where we're gonna jump off. I'm gonna show you how this keeps going, but you should recognize that at this point, I have now made more than a dollar, right? There's somebody who has bid 50 cents and there's another person who has bid 55 cents. And that means I'm gonna get a dollar five. So I'm now in the profitable range and any increase in the bids means that I get more money. 80 cents? Oh, up there even, wow. 85 cents. 90 cents? Yeah, so you're at 90 cents right now? 95? 95 cents? A dollar. You're, you're bidding a dollar? Okay. This is the second place where I want to jump off because usually people think the auction is done at this point. I'm only selling a dollar and now the top bid is a dollar. So rationally, no one would pay more than a dollar to get a dollar, right? Do you think that this auction is done at this point though? You don't care at that point. Okay, a dollar, 95 cents. Now hold on a second. Even though you might think it's done at this point, I just say one thing and every single time the auction continues. If you bid a dollar five, you, you get the dollar and you'll only lose five cents. If you don't bid a dollar five, you'll lose 95 cents. Would you like to go up to a dollar five? Dollar five. So if you bid a dollar ten, you'll only lose ten cents. But if you bid a doll, if you don't bid anything, you lose a whole dollar. So if you stay here and don't do anything, you're gonna lose a dollar. You have to pay me a dollar and get. You're not losing no matter what. If he doesn't bid, then you only lose ten cents. Dollar ten. Dollar fifteen. Dollar fifteen. Dollar fifteen. <laughs> Now, it's usually at this point as the auction continues that uh, economics professors like to point out that both of these players are acting rationally. They're both increasing the bid to decrease their losses, but together they're acting irrationally. Now we're spending more money in total to get 
this single dollar, right? Like it, it seems irrational, even though they're both acting rationally, but that's not where I like to end this. Dollar 20, dollar 20, dollar 25. Dollar 30, dollar 35, dollar 40, dollar 40, 50. I went up to 60, that's fine. Two dollars! <laughs> so you're at a dollar sixty? Dollar sixty, two dollars. That's fine. You owe me two dollars. <laughs> you owe me a dollar sixty-five. Do you have it now or do you want to Venmo me? So that auction ended with the top bidder paying $2 and the second place bidder paying $1.65, which means they paid me $3.65 for a dollar bill. Now I'm going to show you how the other auction ended and it actually ended at a higher price, but I want to explain to you why it's so important to think about the lesson in this auction. It seems like a silly auction, right? There's no way we would live in a world where people would set up and participate in this kind of auction. but. If we think beyond just the basic, this is an auction and we're bidding something up and try to see what the application is in the real world, you're gonna see that it's really important. Let's think of a territory that is worth $1 million and you have two countries fighting over that territory. Now you have each country willing to spend up to $1 million to make sure they get it. So maybe one says I'll spend $750,000. It might not be actual dollars, it could be sending troops at war and they start fighting over this territory. And then the other one says, well, I'm willing to spend $800,000 until finally this war ends. And they might actually spend individually more than $1 million to try and get this territory. But even if they don't individually spend more than $1 million, they together might spend more than $1 million total to try and get that territory. And they really are spending it. Think about people who are losing their lives to try and get this territory. That's the same thing as the loser in the auction having to pay for the bid that he made. And same thing happens with other properties that we might own. We invest resources into protecting those properties when socially it'd be more beneficial if we could trust each other not to fight for that property. So this really teaches me about property rights. When we have clear, defined, secure property rights, we don't waste resources towards trying to fight for that property. We clearly say who owns that property, and then we don't have to worry about the loser paying for resources wasted towards trying to get that property. And the winner's better off too. The winner doesn't have to spend those resources towards protecting their property. Okay, so now you're wondering, how did that second auction end? Would you like to bid a dollar five? Dollar five. You are, let's see, wait, you are now gonna lose a whole dollar for nothing. Would you like to bid a dollar 10 and only lose 10 cents? <laughs> Jumping up to $2. $2, dollar five. He bid $2. <laughs> so you will now lose a dollar five, or if you go up to 205, you'll still lose a dollar five. Ah, but, but you will have won. You're gonna lose the same either way, but you will have beat him and he will have to pay me two dollars. Three dollars. <laughs> Alright, so you pay you're paying two dollars for nothing. He's paying three dollars to get a dollar. Guys, I got a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, I sold that dollar for $5 in that class. They all paid via Venmo, and they all sent me some choice messages to express their frustration with me. But don't worry, they're all business students, and I just told them they learned a lesson in business, and probably the only one they ever need to learn. I have two videos for you to check out after this one. If you're interested in the game theory in this video, you might be also interested in game theory in the Dark Knight. And if you like real life applications of economics, go check out my 24 hour Avengers Marathon. We'll see you in those videos.